Deep in the ocean, an orca pod is on the hunt. But these aren't your average orcas. These guys are organized. Marketing team, did you get those social media posts scheduled for the seal migration? Aye, aye, Captain. We even have an automated notification for all pod managers when they go live. They use Monday.com to keep their teamwork sharp, their communication clear, and their goals in sight. Monday.com. For whatever you run, even orcas. Go to Monday.com to dive deeper. Well, I don't see the point in waiting any longer. So let's bring her out. The star attraction. The one you came to see. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Ms. Judy Gold. So, you, we have Valley Girl, which I must have done thousands of times really? in high school. Oh, oh my God, that was a huge thing when I was growing up. Oh gosh. The Valley, I mean, I didn't even know what a Valley Girl was until you did that. Okay. <laughs> um, the... Conehead, like, how did the Conehead sketch start? The, the Coneheads, um, before we went on the air, Lauren right. thought it'd be a good idea if we did improv at his loft, mm -hmm. and, which was a good idea for right. us to get to know one another. And uh, Danny and Jane and I got a suggestion of an alien family. Mm -hmm. And we just assumed the roles of, of them as the dad and me as the teenage kid, and I <laughs> created the voice. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't until Danny, uh, I think he was watching This Island Earth. Right. Uh, it all came together for him and Tom Davis. Wow. I mean, that's iconic. And you're in the, it's in the uh, center, I, your hat. Your uh, uh, No, tone. that's from the movie. You know, it's oh, so funny fuck. to me. I was like looking at that going, did the, they take that and then put plaster over? I mean, I yeah. I don't know, but yeah. I mean, it's so funny to me that the young actress that they got who looked like me in, right here, that was it. Right. People think I was in that movie more than I actually was. Um, so don't mention it, Judy. Okay, fuck that movie. <laughs> that movie sucked. It was only good on SNL. It was they really, sucked. it was so good. What was, were there a lot, there were a lot of drugs going on. Is that correct? There was some, you know, Gilda didn't do drugs. Jane didn't do drugs. Um, I came there with a drug habit. Right. You know, so uh, it became more available to me. Right. It's always funny to me when they say, yeah, they got into drugs because they couldn't stand the success. It's such bullshit. Right, right. You know, if you're going to be an addict, you're going to be a, an addict. If you have more money and availability, it's right. going to get worse. So did anyone ever say anything to you? Like, uh, no. Wow. But it was also part of the culture. And right. as long of as I, and I never worked high. Right. So, uh, but it did affect my overall uh, spirit. Yeah. You know. Of course. Um, your favorite character that you... You know, I, I've rarely repeated characters. That was my great big idea, even mm -hmm. though Lorne implored me right. to do that because he felt like, you know, obviously it'd make you more memorable. Right, like Roseanne, Rosanna, Dana for exactly. Gilda, yeah. And But I just had, I knew better, you know. I wasn't going to be a hack. Right. It was such a wrong-headed notion. <laughs> right. So as a result, you know, it's still to this day, were you in all four seasons? You know, our five yeah. seasons? Yes, yeah. I was. Yeah. You know, um, but I created this character of Lena Wertmuller. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, which was so random and right. out there and obscure, and I don't think anybody really knew who she was. But I just, she just tickled me. Right. You know. Can I talk to her right now? Let Nina? me see if I can remember how she sounded. <laughs> it was really a bad French-Canadian accent because she was Swiss. <laughs> so I don't know why I did that. Uh... So you do the first show, you do like you do the first 13. When do you know that it's getting picked up? Uh, I don't remember. Okay. Next. I'm then, sorry. <laughs> it's all right. When do you realize this is the zeitgeist? This is... One day, Gilda and I were walking on uh, 6th Avenue, and we had done the sleepover sketch with Madeline Kahn. Oh, Oh, loved her. Yes. Yeah. Oh, she's one of my biggest yeah. influences. Eve Arden, Madeline Kahn, and Richard Pryor. Ah, oh, so Eve Arden loved. Those are the people. Yeah. But um, somebody yelled across the street at us, that's disgusting, you know, which was a line from the sketch. Right. And that's when we knew that people were watching. That's amazing. That's when I knew. So um, I read that you also realized that you were 
a celebrity because John and Yoko stopped you on the street. N- no, I was walking through. I, I, I can fuck you. No, no, no. All right. I, I came from a photo session All with right. Francesca Scavula. Ah. And uh, yeah. I was going to read through. The, the host was Jill Clayberg. Mm-hmm. I'm in the lobby of 30 Rock walking to the elevators. And in the peripheral vision, I see these two figures. They come into focus, and it's John and Yoko. Wow. And as they pass in front of me, John goes, hi, Lorraine. <laughs> Uh, not hi, hi, right. hi, Lorraine. And, you know, I was like Lou Costello. It was like, right. John, babies. <laughs> <laughs> no saliva in my mouth. Right. I went into the elevator and I felt like screaming, John said hi to me in the hall. Right. But then I thought, that really sounds like a high school thing to say. Right. <laughs> so I, I didn't, but man. Oh. That must have been yeah. so incredible. Was, All right. Favorite yeah. host. My God, that would mean I have to remember. You know, Madeline Kahn. Yep. Uh, Steve Martin was mm-hmm. always good. He was pretty much a cast member. Yeah. Um, hmm. uh, whenever Michael Palin hosted, oh, it was yeah. any of the Pythons. They were great. Um, and then the again, you know, Kirk Douglas was fun. Oh yeah. People who were a lot of people don't know that about Kirk Douglas. Yeah. The, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> He actually got my phone number and called me one day at no my, way. my apartment while I was tripping. Oh, my God. Did you answer the phone? Of course I did. Oh, yeah. This is pre, yeah, yeah. where but, you could screen calls. And yeah. wh- how was that conversation? Uh, you're going to hear no this idea. phrase a lot. I don't remember. <laughs> um, did, you, did you know after the fight? How did they get rid of you? How did they well, get rid of the... I mean, f- we weren't fired. Right. It, it was the kind of thing where, but thank you for phrasing it in that yeah. way. Um, I'm very, you know, <laughs> sorry. No, but it's like, all right, sorry. Lorne was not going to stay after five years. Right. Lorne was leaving. Right. So none of us wanted to do the show if he wasn't there. Right. And I wanted to go home. Yeah, you didn't <laughs> really like New York. Wanted, I read that often it, that you didn't like, like New York. It wasn't for me. Yeah. And, you know, there's an aspect of my dislike for it that is so mundane, but I come from a car culture. Right, right. Where I can just go whenever I want to. And if I wanted to pick up my dry cleaning and do a big right. marketing in one day, I right. could do that. You couldn't do that in New York. And that is the reason I love New York, is because I hate the car. Mm-hmm. And I love that I can either walk, ride a bike, take a subway, take a bus, yeah. take a cab, you know. Yeah, but Judy, you know, there's nothing like driving up PCH with the <laughs> ocean on your left and just blasting, you know, your, your tunes, and yeah. it's just fantastic. <laughs> uh, John Belushi's death. Um, oh horrible. Yeah, I mean, I must say that... Uh, I've lost so many people. Yeah. We've all lost. But I mean, yeah. I, I think specifically people from the show right. have lost people in an unnatural way. Yep. So John many Candy, that when yeah. I, you know, I hear certain people die, mm-hmm. I'm surprised that I don't cry. Right. But I really feel like I've become numb. Right. To some extent. Um, and yeah, and, and I knew John Candy too. Yeah. Uh, I knew a lot of these people. I, I had met Chris Farley. We did... Um, the Aspen Comedy Festival mm-hmm. once, and um, I went out to dinner with Steve Martin, and he said, "God, what do you think? What are we gonna do?" And I said, "Don't worry, Norm Macdonald will talk about ass rape, and uh, <laughs> and Chris Farley will do something." Yeah. And I was right. Uh, but I was at a Super Bowl party at John Lovitz's house one time, mm-hmm. and the caterer had made <laughs> these uh, hot dog buns that were shaped like footballs, mm-hmm. and John Lovitz had some kittens. And Chris put a kitten in uh, the inside, bun. Inside, no way. And was like, you know, talking casually and <laughs> pretending like he was going to bite. It was just such a, what, it was such a oh, great visual. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, my God. <laughs> God bless him. Uh, you le- so you leave, you go back to New York. Uh, back to LA. I mean, back to L.A. I'm sorry, you leave yeah. New York, go back to L.A. And is it? What happened? I mean, is it a complete well, adjustment? Um, here's the thing. Growing up in Beverly Hills, right. you either see Cary Grant when you go Christmas shopping, right. or you see the actor that has been on a series and is no longer on a series, right. and you see that look. Right. And I knew that I was going to be facing Do I have that. that look right now? No, you don't, Oh, okay. Sorry. You don't. Uh. <laughs> um, I never wanted to have that look, but I did eventually right. get that look to some extent. But I... 
you know, I had so many friends. Right. And um, so I was always like at the A-list parties. So I, I just, even though I wasn't doing the kind of work I wanted to do, um, I was still among people that made me feel connected to my community. Right. Uh, one time, you know, Penny Marshall and Carrie Fisher had their birthdays both in October, so they give a joint party. And this was like the pinnacle of A-list parties. I mean, everybody was there. And I remember seeing Clint Eastwood turn to Bette Midler and say, man, there sure are a lot of stars here. <laughs> It's high school. It's that's all high amazing. school. I, I, showbiz is total high school. It's, absolutely. it's like you're popular, you're a yeah. burnout, mm-hmm. you're, you know. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. You chose to hit play on this podcast today. Smart choice. Make another smart choice with AutoQuote Explorer to compare rates from multiple car insurance companies all at once. Try it at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy. How did you meet your husband? We had mutual friends. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but, uh, yeah. Okay. That's how I met. All right. So you meet your husband. Mm -hmm. Um, You have two daughters. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was great. And I had a manager at the time who was Paul Feig's wife, mm-hmm. Gloria, uh, Lori, Lori uh, Gilbert. Mm-hmm. Great manager. And I said, I want to do animation. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's really going to be something that I can do. Right. So well, she, your voice is so amazing. Oh, yeah. thank you. Well, um, so she got me an animation agent, right. a voiceover agent. And I, I auditioned for two years and didn't get anything. That whole, I'm telling you, that it is such a little click, that voiceover. It is, yeah. but if you see the talent of right. the people that work all the time, yeah. it's dazzling. Yeah. I took a class with Chris Zimmerman and Charlie Adler, and after that I started booking and I never stopped. Wow. Yeah, and that was like 30 years ago now. Wow. Um, do you get annoyed, like... How do you feel? Like, all right, so I'm. You're someone who had a profound influence on me. You're part of my my love of comedy, and you know, knowing that I was going to meet you. To me, I mean, my girlfriend's here. We were like, ah, 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 you know, does that? How does that make you? I mean, does do you own that? Um, I because it must happen all the time. We're people my age. It's very you know, gratifying. 35. It's so yeah. funny to me when people say, I hope you don't mind me telling you, yeah. but, you know, compliment, compliment, compliment. Like, right. why, why would I mind that? You know, it's so nice of people to do that. Now, you also did Rosalind and Amy Carter, which I remember. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, they vilify uh, Chelsea Clinton. Uh, you know, if you ever follow her tweets, you know. Who's and, they? The current show? No, no. I'm saying people in oh, general okay. vilify. They're All constantly right. writing shit about. And I remember Amy Carter's uh, like on about Twitter, my, really? Yeah. On the oh internet? my god! It's, what? Do you ever follow? Do you what? follow? Can you believe it that someone says something mean on Twitter? Um, <laughs> but I, did you ever get any complaints from the Carter administration with Amy? No. Wow. No, I don't think they treated her in a way. I mean, they treated her as a little girl right. that was in the White House. Right. You know? But everyone used to say, ugh, it was horrible, the shit yeah. they used to say. I know. I know. And f- but I don't think we really were mean. Yeah. You know, uh, I think Danny's, inter- you know, per- portrayal of uh, Carter was right. was nice because right. he was a nice guy. What do you think of the current state? Well, first of all, after who are your favorite performers ever on SNL after you, you're you gone, you know? After I'm gone? Yeah. Because, you know, Gilda and Jane and right. everybody. Right. Everybody in, in our cast. Right. Oh, that unbelievably brilliant cast. Really? Do you think that's ever been... Ma- I don't think that's ever been matched. Well, here's my theory about yeah. it, because they've always had brilliant writers and brilliant right. performers. Whatever cast was on when you were an adolescent, right. that's the best cast. Right. And I agree. I that's agree. That's true. You know? And, um, wow, Jan Hooks... Yep. Uh, oh, God. You know, uh, Amy Poehler, yeah. Kristen Wiig, 
Uh, I love the cast now. Kate McKinnon. Yes. Um, oh, she's a um, beyond. Eddie, Eddie uh, Bryant. Um, Tina Fey. Tina Fey. Fred mm-hmm. Armisen. Uh, Bill Hader. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I love them all. Right. You know, the, I ca- I can't even name all the people that I am so inspired by, and what Lauren has always been really great at is finding people who are really unique. Right. And have a perspective that is all their own that the audience comes to. Right. You know. Did you um, know Phil Hartman? Oh, very well. Yeah. What a tragedy. And I what know. a fucking talent he was. I know. He really was. And he was one of those guys who was absolutely fearless. Right. He was a great improviser, a brilliant improviser. When the Olympics were in L.A., he did this show called Chick Hazard. Mm-hmm. And it was like one of those uh, noir, you know, 1940s uh, murder mysteries. But right. it was improvised. Right. And, oh, God, it was just... I can't even begin to tell you how great it was. Uh, you pinned a letter, or wrote, you, you not pinned, uh, you were part of a letter uh, supporting Al Franken. Yes. I want to thank you for that. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I, I, you can clap, because... Uh, what the fuck? I mean... I, I'm very disappointed that people like Chuck Schumer and uh, Elizabeth Warren yeah. did not stand up for him. Chuck he had sorry. asked, sorry, <laughs> he had to. asked for a, a, an ethics inquiry. Right. I wish that he had just done that. Right. Why because, wouldn't they? We, because Demo- Democrats are stupid. What the fuck? You know, it's like it's no the balls. Idea of, I'm no gonna, balls. I'm going to take poison, hoping others will die. Right. You know, I'm going to set a good example right. so that others will I follow suit. I will sacrifice suit. myself. Yeah. It's, it's so backfiring dumb. badly. So dumb. And how many pictures are there of comics? You know. Touching each other's boobs or private. He, he or wasn't yeah. even touching right. her for one and, thing. And tell me she was not awake. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, no, I just, I, we I don't, don't know. know that. Right. But he's not touching her. It, it's not furtive. Right. He's not doing anything that right. some other person is not taking a photo right. of. Right. So it's not, you know, it's not clandestine. And we just shoot ourselves in the foot. These later women that came forward saying they touched her, he touched their bottom. During photo ops, right. I can't tell you how many times I have touched people's bodies oh. and boobs. Pinched their asses. Well, yeah. I haven't pinched them, oh, but, you know, it's like accidentally oh. right. touched their butts or their boobs. Right. I have. Of course. You know, and that's probably what happened to him. Yeah. I know the guy. Right. You know? And he was so good at, at his job. He was absolutely effective, a true Pro believer. Pro-women. Look he, at all the policies he I know. Yeah. He wanted to do good. He really did. Good job, Dems. Yeah. Um, your two daughters, are they in show business? I don't think they like it when I talk about them. Okay. Let's just say Do that you they, like being a mom? Do I you, love being a mom. That's the greatest. I love them. They are just the, they give my life meaning. Right. Of course. Um, I'm so lucky to be their mom. Right. They are hilarious. They're very unique. And um, I, my older one lives in Brooklyn uh, they New went York? Brooklyn, New York. They, wow. I know. She never learned to drive. Right. Third generation California. Wow, never she to didn't? Drive. Yeah. No. Good for her. I love her. Yeah. <laughs> me too. Yeah. And the younger one graduated college last year and lives with me. Oh, do you love that? It's We are having a, so much fun. It's amazing how being a parent, um, especially in this business, because, yeah, you're you know, you focus on yourself. That's all you do in this business. Me, 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 me. How do I get this? How do I get that? And then you have a child and you go, oh, it's not about me yes. anymore. And it becomes a lot more pragmatic. Yeah. The, the, your goals of it's, working is not so much about... It's about the bank account. Exactly. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. The, um, do you think the industry has... I, you know, people ask say things to me. You know, I feel like I, and I think we kind of discussed this last night at our, oh, shut up, that's my son. Um, (laughs) It's constant. Um, Henry. Um, Do you think the industry has treated you well or treated you fair? I mean, I do this because I love it. I I don't think I've, you know, do you I think I've been treated very fairly. Yeah. Absolutely. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, for considering... You know, to be perfectly honest, I don't think my work on SNL was that good. What? I, I swear to God. No I, way. I, I, you have to believe me, I don't. So, you know, it's, um, 
I feel like the industry treated me appropriately in terms of the impression that I made. Right. So, um, but now, I, the only thing about animation is that you're anonymous. Right. And so people don't think I've been working. Right. And that's a little daunting. Right. Uh, you know, it's like, oh, I really, are you wearing new? Yes. I hate uh, when people say well, shit. Are, are you still working? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I am. I know. You're it's... an adult, so you don't watch cartoons. Right. But <laughs> that's so annoying. I like but, people say shit to performers that they would never say to r regular people. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I, like, I, I heard your law firm went down. <laughs> uh, uh. That doesn't, yeah. like, that doesn't happen. Uh, th th we get so much shit like, oh, we saw you the other night. I mean, how do you think you did? Shut the what? fuck up. Oh, Have you God. ever had someone go, oh, did you enjoy? D fuck you. Oh, God. I had someone, this was memorable, say, oh, are you Lorraine? Yes. Oh, I thought it was you, but you weren't ugly enough. What? <laughs> okay. It's unbelievable. Yeah. The no boundaries bullshit. Yeah. Um, but it's it's that's a rare occasion. Right. Mostly people are really kind. Yeah, but they do it to stand ups, I think, a little more because you're that's you know, brutal. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> right. Uh, uh <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. And I looked at it, and I, I've heard this from a lot of stand-ups. That's exactly what my notebook looks like. Yeah. You know, that just the one word. Yes. And then the dash, and then go to this, and then, and it's uh, the fact that I have thought my entire life, I'm so disorganized, you know, my papers look like, you know, it's just shit. Oh, look at this. These are your notes. It's like, oh, I had a thought. I got to write it down, you know? But that's how our brain works. And I think, oh my God, I'm part of this community that's... Yeah. And I think that yeah. when we get laughs for our material... right. It's, and I've said this before, it's, it's like a form of communion with other people. Right. There's something very um, beautiful about the fact that you recognize that your perspective, you're not alone in it. Right. That the audience recognizes it too. Right. That is very emotional to me. Yeah. And this is on a grand scale that people are really going to have an empathic understanding of what we go through to produce what we produce. Right. Uh, you know, there's a display. The George Carlin display yeah. is breathtaking. Thank yeah. you, Kelly Carlin, for donating all the, those things. And, you know, he, he kept everything. And he had files and all categories of mm -hmm. files. And he would go through them and see how some could connect right. to others. Right. I mean, he was a real wordsmith. Yeah. Um, and he understood the song of... Of his delivery, it's, and yeah, it's very musical. Yes, it's about it timing. Mm -hmm. And if you t do, you play any musical instruments? Uh, I was, I did, but not anymore. Right, but I, a lot. If you talk to a lot of people who do comedy, a lot of them have, you know, as a child or so, yeah. you know, are very musical. Yes. What do you think of the state of comedy today? Now that we are at this point where comics are being held to a higher standard than fucking asshole politics, the president of the United States, you know, we are held to this standard, you know, we get vilified for saying things, and yet this... Are you referring to... Uh, orange fuckface. Uh, yeah. Um, well, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. People believe what they want to believe. But I think it's also, I think that comedy's really important now. Absolutely. But I I don't know if, but I think that People don't, I think, I don't know, that they don't have, uh, we don't have an attention span mm -hmm. anymore. So people will knee-jerk react to a word in a joke. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people take the time, what is the intent of this joke? What is the, you know, I'm laughing, but what is this joke saying? Well, you, know? you have to consider the audience. Right. I, I really think that... Uh, well, this is not going to go over well for some conservatives in the right. audience, but do we um, have any? I mean, what conservatives like comedy anyway? Uh, All right, I I saw yeah, a, sorry. Uh, on Wednesday the Camille Bell. Yes, he he started to say something. I think he was talking about Ving Rhames being arrested outside his own house. Yes, and there was a girl in the audience that said, "Don't lecture me." Well, how is that lecturing yeah. anybody? It's a premise. You know, to, so yeah. what that illustrates to me is that she was not listening. Right. And that there was no real, um, what's the word, uh, uh, critical thinking? Right. Yeah. Dumb. She's a dumb, dumb. bitch and a she's racist. Dumb. Okay. Yeah. She's a dumb bitch. I would call her a cunt, actually. I would call um, her, well, you know, I don't fucking say. Fucking white supremacist I don't say the guy's yeah. name, the orange one. I call yeah. him Donald Twunt. Don <laughs> That's Donald my Twant. name for the creature. I hate him. I, I, hate I him. really hate him, and I hate what he's doing to this country. Yeah. yeah. I, and, you know, Obama, the best sense of humor. Oh, my the God, best. yes. Yes. And this asshole <clears throat> can't even go. First of all, he did SNL and wasn't funny because he can't laugh at himself, you know? I know. Well, and, the correspondence dinner yeah. uh, before he was president, I don't right. remember who it was. Yeah, it was Seth Meyers. Yes, uh, you know, oh God, he's just a moron. He, I know. Uh, has there ever been a president that has been called a moron by people who are in his yeah, party? Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, yeah, it's it's amazing. He has no sense of humor. I um, love the CEO of, of of Harley Davidson calling him a moron. I yes. know, <laughs> fucking asshole. Does anyone have any questions for the Lorraine? Yes. Are you a part of the National Lampoon Radio? I, I was not a part of it, but I did one album called That's Not Funny, That's Sick. And I just sat in and did a couple of voices on it. 
But no, I, I, I would love to have been, but I'm, I'm not. Yes? What voices do you do in the animation? Um, well, I have to look in my IMDb page, but... Uh, <laughs> What voices? <laughs> Currently, I, I'm in. I do, I do I a lot of Pixar down. and Illumination, uh, DreamWorks. Uh, the series that I have on right now are uh, on Boomerang for Warner Brothers, Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, mm -hmm. I'm the Wicked Watch, <laughs> and um, Netflix, uh, The Crudes, uh, Puss in Boots, pa Captain Underpants, The Hardy Girls, Below Three Below, which is a uh, an offshoot of Troll Hunter, which I'm also in, uh, and that's a Guillermo del Toro show. Mm. Um, a Talking Tom, Sophia the First, Vampirina. That's wow. I think what I'm doing now. That's awesome. Yeah, it's great. You know what's so great? You can fucking roll out of bed and go to a voiceover. You know what I mean? That's the way I like it, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Who were some of your favorite musical guests to uh, meet and hang out with at the show? Oh, I love that. The musical guests. That's, yeah. Uh, the Stones were really interesting wow. as hosts. And at one point, I had asked Mick Jagger and Keith Richards, one of the first records I bought was not Fade Away. I was too young to know who Billy, uh, Ho Buddy Holly was. Yeah. So I thought that was their song. But there's a guitar break in that song that absolutely set me on fire. And so, you know, I said to Keith and, and Mick, I said, you know, this is probably a stupid question, but, and they went, don't say that. Nothing's stupid. Don't put yourself down like that. And they were sincere. Wow. Which was so sweet. And um, David Bowie. Oh, I my God. I love David yeah. Bowie. Uh, Ry Cooter. Mm. Devo. Oh, I love Devo. Elvis Costello. Oh, I love Elvis Costello. Um, I'm sure there's oh, hundreds that I won't won't have thought of, but what's the you know the part there? You hear about the party after the show. <laughs> well, the party, you know, I think a lot of us stopped going. After, really? After, yeah, because it was. And there's a New Yorker, a New York Times magazine about the party, mm -hmm. and uh, lots of quotes for me. <laughs> um, but one of the things was that the the party was just as stressful in the context of jockeying for right. position. And after you spent the night, spent the evening slaying the live television dragon, mm -hmm. you don't want to keep doing it afterwards. Right. It's like continuing working. Did anyone refuse to go to the party? Well, I mean, it's optional. Right. It's not like, I refuse. Yeah. No, I mean, did anyone say I'm not fucking going to the party? Like Nobody actively said that, but just people weren't there yeah. after a while. Yeah, I can't stand that part of the business. It's like after you're done, you want you want them to remember you slaying. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And then I don't want to, because it, I don't know. Well, also, I mean, you know, a lot of these people at the party are strangers. Right. I mean, it's very thrilling to meet them. Right. But they are strangers. Right. It's and, not and that And you're thrilling. talking over noise. And right. It's just, it's not the way to connect. How did you stop your drug problem? Um, I had a really bad audition. I'm, I'm bad at auditions anyway, but... Um, and I knew, I'm, I was always very uh, self-aware when it came to, I was never one of those people that said, I can handle it, I can quit right. whatever I want. Right. I knew from the very beginning that I was an addict. Right. Um, and um, my agent called me after the audition and said, how'd it go? And I said, I was terrible. He said, good, I wanted to make sure that you knew that. Wow. And he said, I got to tell you, honey, you know, people don't know what's going on with you. But, uh, and I, at, at that point, I realized that the last door to any kind of participation in the world was about to shut. Right. So I checked myself into Brotman Memorial Hospital Chemical Dependency Unit, mm -hmm. April 28th, 1987, and uh, been clean sense. Yes! I love that. That's awesome. Uh, I always ask two questions to my guests. Um, the first one is... Because yes, I'm we're, Jewish. I am Jewish. Oh, fuck. Okay. Uh, I, I'm very... Uh, I suffer from anxiety, depression. You know, I had a very bad clinical depression, so we're very pro-mental health. Yes. Uh, and... I get a lot of letters like, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, mental health, people don't realize it's just like having like 
a physical problem, you know? So we uh, always... No, I like that. Thank you for clapping. But it's true. It's like, come on. You know, if you're ever... If you suffer from any sort of anxiety, depression, it's like... It, you realize it is not in under your control. Yeah, people are exactly. like, I was in a clinical depression. All my mother did. I mean, she loved me, but she would be like, every day she'd call me. Are you better? Oh, are you better? My God. Do you feel better? How are you today? You better? You better? Oh. You better? You better? You better? And I was like, oh my God, I can't. Okay. So we always ask our guests if they uh, have taken any sort of antidepressants. Right? Yes, absolutely. Yes! Okay. They um, saved my life. Right, exactly. You know, um, I think people are that better? have depression... <laughs> I beg your pardon? <laughs> are you better? <laughs> yeah. I'm managing, yeah. honey. Yeah. But, you know, uh, for those of us that have, you know, chronic depression, mm-hmm. it's bottomless. And... Antidepressants gives it a floor. Right. It doesn't eliminate it. Right. It just gives it a floor so that it has a reasonable depth, but it's not endless and bottomless to where nothing, the world just isn't worth being a part right. of. But it's interesting when you go through that and you think, you know, like these horrible, you know, Anthony Bourdain, Kate Spade, you know, yeah. and you can say, I mean, horrible. Yes. I would never do it. But I totally, you know, people are like, oh, you had everything in the world. But you know what it feels like to be like, wouldn't it, the world be better if I wasn't, you know? In yeah, it, and, and it, even I'm always surprised that people who have children k- kill themselves. Yes, because same. I know I would never do that to my kids, but I've never been in a place where I thought they would be better off right. without me. I know? think that's where they get to, you yeah. know? Um, and then... I always ask, you know, the name of my sh- podcast is Kill Me Now because I get aggravated at, like, I get pissed off at, you know, <laughs> like, to, like an unnatural degree. You know, I co- I find myself saying almost six times a day, oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Over, you know, if I've missed the toothpaste right. on the, you know. Right. What pisses you off to the point of, you know, that you just are like, are, yeah, you There's know. There's two things. Okay, good. One well. is the women that think that they can catch something from a toilet seat. Oh, I know. So they do that ski jump oh thing and God. end up pissing all, all over the over seat. All over the fucking seat and, and then the floor. I fucking sit in it. I fucking hate that. <laughs> what is that? And they don't clean it up. And, it's and like, they don't clean it's it up. It's all over you know, the floor. And there's a shield right there. Right. There's a fucking shield yeah, that you can pull out and put on. The second thing is that people don't realize that when... The traffic light is out. It works like a stop sign. Right. Or in the left turn lane, people who are too timid to pull out into the intersection. Right. I I lose my mind. Yeah. It's so fucking annoying. That toilet seat thing, no one's ever said that. I can't fucking take it. And I just... And racism. Racism is... Racism, I can't. That I can't even fucking deal with. Um, Lorraine... This has been one of the greatest <laughs> afternoons of my, my thank career. You. I can't. Oh, thank I, you. I'm not kidding. You are. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for making me laugh as as a young girl. And thank you so much. Thank you for doing this pod. I can't. I can't. Thank I you can't enough. even. I can't. Oh even. my god. Um, and as I always say at the end of my podcast, because this is what my mother said. So long! (laughs) And uh, everything was wonderful. I'll see you soon. Thank you for the visit. So long. Holiday magic is in the air at iFly Indoor Skydiving. Imagine unwrapping the experience of flight iFly is the perfect unique gift for anyone who wants to turn their dream of flying into a joyful reality. It's unforgettable fun for all ages. Save over 35% with iFly's limited time holiday gift voucher flight packages. Turn dreams into unforgettable moments with the gift of flight. Go to iFlyWorld.com to purchase your holiday gift vouchers. That's iFlyWorld.com.